Chess friends, hope you are doing well. Leela Chess Zero is a beautiful and a female chess AI who is the number 4 chess player worldwide, and this game is marvelous because she played a spectacular opening, featuring knight sacrifice in the center, this game is very flexible and tactical, so let's get started without wasting any time, Leela started the game with e4, and I responded with g6, the modern variation, she go with d4 to dominate the center, after some subsequent moves, we have d6. Considering the modern approach in the game to play knight d7 to strike in the center, which is very usual, after b3, a6 happens to block the knight's entry point on the b5 square and potentially move the pawn forward to b5, activating the bishop on the b7 square, we have queen d2, making a queen b3 to launch an attack on the dark square bishop, additionally, she can play f3 and push forward her pawn on the h-file to open the file for potential rook attacks. A couple of moves later, we have h4 in the game, declaring war on the king's side, I replied, if you can attack me, then I can too, as the knight reaches d5, it becomes evident that you should not capture the knight, instead, you should push the pawn forward to a5 to safeguard the structure on b4, she immediately strikes on the king's side with h5, and capturing the pawn on h5 is very dangerous, this will weaken the file, which is why after knight e2, followed by knight f6. And after some captures occurred on f6, white can initiate with knight g3, significantly pressuring the pawn, some of you might consider playing h4 to kick out the knight, but then knight h5 comes with the idea of attacking the bishop, then pushing the pawn forward, you may be tempted to capture the pawn on an e4, which is also a good move, but after the exchanges occur, I can lock down your bishop's position by playing d5. Now your bishop's potential gets limited, and after rook g8 to pressurize the g2 pawn, I can give you a check, and subsequently rook e1 will come to get activated in this e-file, your king's position is very precarious. I mean, king f8 is burdened because of bishop h6, and this position offers me a significant advantage, it's like you are down a rook against me because the king is located in the center of the board, and is in a precarious position with its pieces. So, returning to the position, we observe that you cannot capture the pawn, which is why I decided to go with e6, kicking out the knight, and as the knight retreats to f4, it pressures the pawn, some may argue that e5 is the best move to attack the knight, but after the capture on e5, the knight will come to the f3 square to kick out the bishop, simultaneously, knight to c6 will be considered by many players. Even knight t7 looks the same, but after I capture and eliminate your bishop, I can give you a check, and no matter whether you block it or move your king, I can invade your king's side by capturing the pawn on g6, the f pawn cannot be captured because of knight e6, which attacks your king and rook, and if you capture the pawn with your knight, then after I capture the knight, bishop to g5 will come and completely ruin your position, you can see that this position is just paralyzed and queen d4 is coming to attack the rook and king position along with the diagonals by the bishop pair, which is just overwhelming for you. It's like superheroes like Iron Man and Spider-Man attacking your position, and your situation is very dire with no chance of recovery. So, returning to our main variation, in this position, we observed that e5 is a very risky move, which is why I decided to capture the pawn on e4, and as the knight moves to h3, it becomes clear that pushing her pawn on f3 initiates an attack by playing knight g5, creating pressure on the pawn on e6, that's our strategy, which is why after bishop f5, knight g5 follows to create significant damage to the structure. Any normal move in this position will create a problematic situation for you because h6 is also there to kick out your bishop, and playing h6 yourself is just a vulnerable move, let me show you the variation, here I can sacrifice my knight on f7, you can see what a knight sacrifice it is because after you capture my knight, g4 will follow, deflecting the bishop's position from guarding the g6 pawn, which is why I can capture the pawn on g6, forcing the king to move. And rook to g1 will follow in the game. Noticing that the rook is under attack, black might be tempted to capture it, but after observing that the e6 pawn is under attack, playing queen to e7 is a more reasonable move. Then after bishop h3, which will create crucial pressure on the e6 pawn, e5 can be played. Then, 
something like knight d5 will attack the queen, and the bishop is dominating that diagonal through the h3 square, which is why queen d8 is necessary to protect that pawn, subsequently, queen f3 will come to checkmate you in one move, and this position is just lost for you, because after queen to f5, the main threat is to play queen e6, the goal is to checkmate you, not in a football goal but a checkmating goal in chess, even rook to f8 is not possible because of queen e6. And the king cannot move there because I can capture the pawn on e5, creating serious trouble in your position, this forces you to recapture my pawn on e5, and after that, the diagonal will be opened, where my bishop can easily move into the c5 diagonal, checking the king and making its position completely vulnerable, with the knight coming to e7, it will just destroy your position completely, and this game will be over. So, let me share a beautiful quote about life and time. 90% of what you're stressing about right now won't even matter a year from now, take a deep breath. So, going back to the position, we observe that playing h6 to kick out the knight is a very burdensome move, as I can capture the pawn on f7, so, after queen e7 follows to protect my structure, playing knight c6 will be a reasonable move in the next few moves, she goes with bishop c4 to create more pressure on the pawn on e6, you can observe that playing any natural looking moves might seem reasonable at first glance, but h6 can disrupt your bishop's position. And playing h6 yourself will create the same trouble for you, as we discovered in the previous variation. This is why I decided to go with knight to d7, and as the rook moves to e1 to get access to this e-file, because the center is closed, it's like the hedgehog octopus structure, where many pieces are attacking the pawn structure on e6. Some of you may argue for playing d5 to lock down the position completely, but her pieces are designed to sacrifice, I mean sacrifices on f7, and even sacrifices on d5, afterwards, she can capture the pawn on d5 with her bishop, attacking the rook, and as the rook moves. Bishop to f4 will follow, pinning your queen to the king, and you will lose your queen, even if you dare to block the attack by playing knight e5, I can capture the knight with my bishop, and it threatens to capture the bishop and simultaneously attack the queen and king, this will end your love story of the king and queen, create a playlist of sad songs because that event is going to happen. In this version, we examined that d5 is not viable, which is why some may argue for playing h6, but still, it is a completely disrespectful move, as Leela can sacrifice her knight on f7, have you ever sacrificed your knight on f7? I don't think so, that type of sacrifice only happens in chess air games, and even in some grandmaster games, she can go with h takes g6, forcing you to capture, but the queen cannot capture it because she will lose her health and life, and even the bishop cannot capture it, evidently, it loses the guard on the pawn on e6, which is why the knight can initiate the attack by playing knight takes e6, opening up the diagonal, and simultaneously opening up the rook file, and this version is just bad for you. So, going back to the variation, we discovered that h6 is not viable to kick out the knight, which is the reason why I decided to go with knight b6, creating pressure on the bishop on c4, after bishop b5 check follows in the game, king f8 might be a precious move for some chess players, but after capture and recapture, we can exchange the rooks and play f3, ironically, I can push forward the pawn on g4, trapping your bishop completely, in order to safeguard the bishop e5 is the only move to give some breathing room for the bishop. But after capture and recapture, g4 will come anyway, and as the bishop moves back, the exchanges will occur on d7. Here, white can play the astonishing move, which black didn't even consider in his dream, can you imagine that move? The brilliant and cunning move is knight e6 check, what a beautiful and spectacular move it is. You cannot capture the knight because knight takes g6 can ruin your king and queen position, and it protects the g7 square, if the king goes to e8, I can initiate another plan by playing knight takes c7, checking the king and the rook simultaneously, which will just destroy your position, so, going back to the position, we discovered that kf8 is not viable to safeguard the king from the bishop's attack, so, after king d8. The problematic situation for you is that the king is located in the center of the board, unable to castle, which is why I respond with d5. 
trying to break open the center because the king is just vulnerable, it also provides the open diagonal for the bishop, but it doesn't matter, and it also doesn't matter if you capture the pawn, whether with your knight or the pawn, because I can recapture the pawn with my knight. No, the best move is not knight takes d5, it's bishop tails b6, what a beautiful move, it attacks the queen and wins the material. Going back to the position, if you capture the pawn with your knight, then I can pick up your knight, and subsequently my queen will come to the d5 square, attacking the rook, and the rook has no retreating square, I mean, it has only one square to go, then knight takes f7 will come, checking the king and the rook simultaneously, I mean, this position is just twisted for you, creating a precarious situation for you. Attacking the rook and at the same time, attacking the f7 pawn with the knight. So, let me inspire you by making a beautiful quote. The only way to achieve your dreams is to take action, don't wait for opportunities, create them, you have the power to make anything happen. So, going back to the position, we discovered that taking the pawn with any of your pieces is a very vulnerable move, which is why we have e5 to kick out the knight, and as the knight retreats to d3, it becomes crystal clear that your center is very locked down, and the bishop is dominating over the diagonal, the other bishop is posing a threat to the knight, and the knight from g5 is creating a problematic situation on the king side, this is why I decided to go with king c8, after some following moves. We have knight d5, and here she played a brilliant move in this position, can you imagine that move? Try to pause the video and figure it out, the best and stunning move that Leela Zero played is knight takes e5, sacrificing the knight right away, subsequently, queen takes d5 arrives on the board, attacking the rook and simultaneously the knight, and the f7 pawn, your king is located in the center of the board and has no bodyguards to safeguard his position. Going back to the position, playing bishop e5 is also a burdensome move because I can still capture the pawn on d5, attacking the rook, the rook has literally no square to go except e8, but it also damages your position as I can play bishop e6 check, forcing the king to move, then knight takes f7 will come on the board, causing significant damage to the king side, and I can even capture your rook, if you capture it, I can capture back your knight on g8, and this position is just favorable for me. So, eat popcorn, drink your juice, and think a little bit about what white should consider in this position, noticing that the knight is under attack, I decided to capture the piece on e3, I mean, she goes with the more talented knight c6, attacking the queen because the knight is also under attack and pinned to the queen, I played a very brilliant move here, some of you might be tempted to consider queen f6, preparing to invade and attack with the queen and bishop, but white can block it with c3, which also prepares an attack on the knight, some may consider playing knight g4, which is just a very bad move because I can initiate an attack by playing rook to e8 check, after knight takes a5 happens on the board, queen d5 will arrive, and you can see that your king is in a precarious situation, the king's position is just blasted, let's put this as a chess puzzle, with black to move, how can white checkmate black in just two moves? Think a little bit and write down your answers in the comments. Going back to the position, we observed that the queen cannot accept this, which is why I decided to play the brilliant move bishop takes b2, it's like saying to Lilash Zero that if you can play brilliant moves and sacrifices, then why not I? I am the god of chess. After king takes b2, black will initiate a heavy attack by playing queen f6 check, forcing the king to move, going to a8 will lead to a checkmate, this speaks volumes about your logical thinking and positional understanding. It shows that you don't know the movements of positionally advantageous pieces, and the chess tactics of puzzles, it exposes your brain capacity, in this position, Lila Zero decided to go with King B1 because she is not like you, a foolish person, we have Bishop takes C2, forcing the king to capture my bishop on B2, then I can follow up with Queen F6 check, the king c1 move is not possible, as I already mentioned. We have knight d4 and knight a5 to increase the pressure against the knight, we follow up with knight f3 to safeguard it, but here comes the final punch, c5, putting significant pressure on the knight, after capture and recapture, and the exchange of pieces in the d4 square, 
it becomes clear that the king is facing the other king, both sides have an equal number of pieces, but my king is a little bit exposed, after capturing the piece, white can initiate an attack by playing rook to e8 check. What a beautiful check! Following that, bishop to c6 check will come, noticing that the rook is under attack, after captures and recaptures happen on the board, it becomes quite clear that it's rook versus knight, this endgame clearly favors Leela zero, after a couple of moves, with some queen and king dances, we have rook to e8 check, after the king moves and the queen comes to the c4 square, it attacks the queen and also puts pressure on the knight on e7, the king is the only piece protecting those pieces. So after d5 and some piece movements, we have g4 on the board, capturing the pawn on g4 would expose the king on this f file, which is the reason why I didn't capture the pawn and played some alternative moves, a few moves later, the king is very exposed and it becomes quite clear that it is knight versus rook again, she has a passed pawn on the a file, and by promoting it into a new queen, she checkmates me, what a brilliant game it was, I really enjoyed this game very much, if you did too. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, wishing you all the best. Bye bye, see ya.